Dana Andrews uh, is uh, known by visage and by name in so many different ways that I think uh, uh, we should ask you, Dana, what's your favorite thing you've ever done? Uh, Broadway, movies, what you're doing now, television? Yeah, that's pretty hard to say. Actually, acting is the same. A lot of people make uh, out that it's different. The techniques are a little different on the stage and, and on the screen. But I had very little. I actually started out on the stage because I did 25 plays at the Pasadena Playhouse. But I actually, I like acting, but it really doesn't make an awful lot of difference. I even did a radio series, I did a television series, so I've worked in them all. And my favorite, for different reasons, would be uh, the movies, I think. Because, but at the time, I was in them, not today. Right. Yeah. You no, know, at the time you were in them, though, that, uh, that was an enormous success for you. It came very quickly, didn't it? No. Well, tell us. No. <laughs> okay, no. Now, tell us how it all started. You see, uh, every day is six months when you <laughs> are not a star. <laughs> right, okay. But I started out and signed with Goldwyn, and the first year I did one little speaking part in the Westerner with Gary Cooper. And then the second year, well, I was, he sold half the contract to Fox, and I was doing things like Sailor's Lady with John Hall and Nancy Kelly, and then the next one of that was a thing with Virginia Gilmore. And they would say, oh, this, you're going to become a star. You're going to become a star. Well, I actually didn't become a star for five years. Of course, now let's go back. Now, you were raised in Alabama, Mississippi. Mississippi. Father was no, a Baptist No, minister. I was born in Mississippi, and I lived there for four years. But I went to Texas, and I'd actually raised a manhood in Texas. Okay. Various parts of Texas, all over Texas. Then, But I was still not 21 when I went to California and uh, to get into pictures, and I took them by storm in nine years. <laughs> right. Hitchhiked to California. Hitchhiked to California, and... Uh, I, I studied opera for six years and learned five complete operatic roles. Never used it. Even when I was doing State Fair, uh, Alfred Newman said, Dana, you sing, don't you? And I said, oh, no. I didn't want to get typed as a singer, although I'd started out to be really? that. I would found out that if you get typed as a singer, that's it. That's why Frank Sinatra offered to do uh, From Here to Eternity for, uh, to uh, Harry Cohn for $10,000, because he was only known as a singer. And he got it, and he did do it for $10,000, and he became known as an actor then. Now, <clears throat> the reason you're here in South Florida is talking about alcoholism, and I know you have, have you, you are an alcoholic, you were an alcoholic? How well, you, I, you have to say it one way only, yeah. and that is I am an alcoholic, because alcoholism is a disease recognized as such by all of the big medical things, including the American Medical Association. It is a disease, but it is a disease of which there is, for which there is no cure, but you can arrest it perfectly successfully, and we have uh, uh, demonstrated that by, for instance, uh, two years ago, uh, the, uh, what they call Operation Understanding in Washington. We had 52 people, all distinguished, well-accomplished people, well-known in the United States, all of whom are alcoholics, but recovered alcoholics. They don't right. drink anymore. Right. They might drink again. Some of them, I don't know. I hope they don't. But if they do, they'll soon learn that there's no use. They, they have to, in order to live a successful life, they have to uh, quit. Well, Dana, what prompted you to stop drinking? What happened? Well, I'd have to give you a little bit to the lead up to it. The first time I stopped from the time I began to have problems, I would quit and then I'd drink again, quit and drink again. And, uh, but in 1958, I uh, said to my wife, well, I'm going to go down and have a few drinks at the bar and come back, and that's the end of it. She said, oh, that'll be the day. But I did, and I didn't have a drink for six years. Really? And I went to New York, and I did, I did a Playhouse 90, then I went to New York and did a year, two for Seesaw, then Bancroft, no drinks, not a thing. And then I went back to uh, Los Angeles, went to night school, took up real estate, made a million dollars in real estate. <laughs> and then I was doing, uh, after a picture in Spain, I went to Hawaii, and uh, six years without a drink, and I started drinking again to prove that I could drink, like the Rand Corporation says you can do. Right. I don't believe it. I think they have a book that says you can, but they, they didn't go according to all the scientific methods of that thing. Because I don't believe, I've seen hundreds of thousands of alcoholics, and I've never seen one who, was, who could properly be diagnosed as an alcoholic who could drink again after he stopped. He, right. he just can't do it. But anyway, I started again, and for about two weeks I was able to do it, and that's the, then I started drinking scotch, and it was off again for four and a half years. And then I was in a hospital because I had uh, just about collapsed, and... Uh, I recuperated, and the doctor, who had been my doctor for 20 years, said to me as I was leaving, he said, well, I, you shouldn't go home, but uh, I'll let you go. And, uh, I want to tell you something, and I think I ought to tell you, because uh, I've never tried to frighten you, and I'm not trying to frighten you now. But he said, I don't, I'm not sure you'd pull through another one of these, Dana. And uh, I knew he wasn't uh, kidding me. He meant it. He felt it. That's what he thought. 
So uh, a very strange thing happened. I never wanted to drink after that, and I haven't had a drink since. That was April 11th, nine years ago, next mm. April. Yeah. Well, now I can imagine a lot of people watching you now and hearing you tell that story say, gee, I wish that would happen to me. I wish that switch would turn in my brain and I wouldn't want to. But mm. I think I, I, I know enough people who want to quit, at least they think mm. they do, but can't. Yeah. Well, how do you get it? This is what the great, great problem is. That's why we call it the disease of denial, is because you deny that you can't. You deny all the time, as, as I, I say sometimes, that here's a person who has everything in the world to live for, and he becomes an alcoholic, and he acts exactly as if he wants to die, and denies all the time that he can't quit. He can quit any time he wants to. Richard Burton said, I'm not an alcoholic, I'm just a drunk. He said, what's the difference? He said, well, a drunk can quit, and an alcoholic can't. He's wrong. I'm an alcoholic, and I quit. Right. And, and he's, I think he's stopped now. I mean, did, it, did it take you a long time to be able to say that, that I'm an alcoholic? Did that bother you? Oh, no. It? No, it didn't. It, it, I just didn't say it because I didn't believe it. Yeah. It takes a long time to believe it. That's where the denial comes in. Yeah. You deny. You say, well, look, I can quit. And you do. You quit for two weeks. You say, okay, you see, I quit. That's only a ploy. You, all you want to do is do that so you can go back and drink again. People do it with cigarettes. They say, I can quit any time I want to. And you say, well, quit. I say, oh, I've quit hundreds of times. Every morning. <laughs> right. They're really not quitting. Yeah, That's no. You, you, you don't really quit. But when you, you know what the danger is, and you know if you can convince an alcoholic that he has to do something about it or suffer the consequences, which in some cases will be death. Yeah. If you can convince that, but that's a very difficult thing to do, and that's why they have Awareness Week. Aware of what alcoholism is, aware that it can be treated, and a person can live a happy, productive life twice as happily as if he were drinking. I didn't really have an awful lot of fun. I thought I was at the time, but it was, as Dr. Bracelin said, who was the president of the... Uh, uh, of the American Psychiatric Association said to me, unfortunately, here is a disease that is its own cure for a few hours. We thank you for being honest and open and helping share your life with us. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Because, uh, thank you very much. I'm sure that uh, uh, the people who, who remember that when somebody tells you that you're drinking too much, think about it. Right. Maybe they're right. Wise words to think on. Dean Andrews, thank you very much. We'll be right back.